Hello, Eugene McGuinness here again. Uh, I'm just here to give you a quick update on what's happening with uh, the Hebron Road development or the mosque, as you would know it. Uh, quite a lot of people have contacted me today because they've heard the news on KCLR with regard to um, the decision being made. Uh, the imam was interviewed again today on KCLR, as he has been um, quite a few times explaining his position, and I've heard it, as I say, quite a few times before. Um, so just to give you an update, so you know where we're going as a, a committee, uh, I have been down to examine the new uh, submission. I was there today, actually, as I am there every week. Uh, effectively, what they have done is they've been asked by the County Council to submit uh, or to, to change the plans in order that they may get planning permission. Uh, I think the, the questions that they were asked, uh, I think there was about 18 questions in all, was based, were, were entirely based on our objection. So they needed to correct any of the perceived weaknesses in that application in order to grant permission. Now, um, they have done that. They have submitted it. I have examined it. Uh, not to, uh, I have to say, I need a weekend to have a look at it uh, in, in the company of an architect so we can go through it. Um, now, what they have done, just roughly, basically, what just to go through it a little bit, uh, they've changed the orientation of the mosque, for instance. It was at an angle, slight angle before the county council wanted it to be in line with the present Aldi. So they have done that. They have asked the examining community to submit a visual um dimension to the application as far as they want a, a visual impact statement type of thing where you basically take photographs from various areas in Kilkenny to see what kind of an impact um, visually the mosque would have from various angles on the estate, on the city, etc. and how it would affect the skyline. Now, uh, I would have to say when I looked at those pictures, they're very poor quality um, and uh, whoever had taken those photographs certainly won't get a job as a photographer anytime soon because most of them are taken unusually um, behind trees, funny angles. Uh, the mosque itself was represented as a kind of um, dark grey building uh, which kind of disappeared into the badly taken photograph. Uh, it didn't represent a copper roof or the bright colours that's very likely to be painted. It That wasn't represented and as a consequence I think the whole exercise was a waste of time. But that's um, an entirely different day's work. You know, I, I don't actually think that it makes any difference to the objections that we originally made to this proposal. I think they still stand up. Um, and I think that that will be the case when it goes to Bor Planala, because undoubtedly it will go to Bor Planala. They were, they were also asked to submit a new traffic impact assessment, simply because the last one to put in was rubbish it did not represent traffic flows all the rest of it it was just wrong and they asked them to submit a new one now if you want an expert on the traffic uh, in on that junction really you should knock on the doors in bishop Burst place or assumption place or lock and roll hebron park Oshie park you should ask ask of those people they're experts because they've been living the nightmare for a long time so regardless what way you butter it up at this stage the traffic situation down there is not acceptable. So regardless what we butter it up, more traffic won't make it any more accessible. It's just uh, won't make it any more acceptable. It just simply won't happen. It's just increasing traffic down there. It makes it much more difficult. It doesn't make a difference what we present, as I'm saying. So that makes no odds. Uh, there are other uh, small things like they have actually reduced the size of the minaret by about two meters. Uh, I don't believe they're asked to do that. They probably did it to make it more acceptable to the public and to make it more palatable. Um, it's not any more palatable to me as a consequence. I'm interested in the traffic, parking, etc., and they haven't addressed that. You know, doing traffic, doing traffic impact assessments makes no difference, as I just said. So that's where it's at. Now, we can object to that because effectively it's a new application. They were given six months almost to uh, make those changes. Now, it didn't take the six months to have it back in five, I think, but they were given that length of time. But we were only given two weeks now to examine this in detail and to put in another objection. Now, the thing about it is, um, really, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference whether I was put in an objection at this stage or not, because, uh, as I said, I believe my original objections stand 
and this is going to go to board planola one way or the other if they refuse planning permission the islamic community are in their right to object or to appeal it to board planola if they're granted it is my right to appeal it to board planola so it's going to be decided in board planola whatever way it works out so that's the situation as it stands. That's where we're going. So over the weekend, we'll be looking at all this and we'll make a better assessment of it. We'll be, we will be preparing ourselves for whatever comes down on the line. So that's where it is at the moment. The only other issue that I want to speak about to you now is, as I said in every video, is our public representatives, the ones that don't represent us. Um, they're, they have said nothing. They continue to say nothing. They continue to avoid the questions. They've been asked by... Um, local radio, national radio, no opinion, not uh, absolutely closed down as soon as they're asked. Now, anybody who's ever applied for planning permission, particularly out of the country or uh, in actual fact in the industrial states, will know some of the difficulties you would have. And under normal circumstances, you would go to your public representative to speak to the officials because they would know more about the planning issues involved. That's completely normal. I don't have any problem with that. But it's strange now that we're talking about a mosque that everybody suddenly, or at least some people, suddenly say, well, we don't want to interfere with the planning process. Speaking to you, as I do tonight, is not interfering with the planning process. Making representations on behalf of your community is not interfering with the planning process. Malcolm Newman is quite prepared to stand up and say, as is his right, that he agrees with the mosque being built in the Hebron Industrial Estate. Now, Malcolm Newman doesn't live over here. I totally disagree with his position, but he has a right to make that particular argument. Sinn Féin have say, are very much in favour of it. Now, that is despite the fact that I was told by the Sinn Féin representative just before that meeting at Lachlan's Club that he was very much against it, and uh, within earshot of other people, I would add. So, therefore, it's a Sinn Féin policy, obviously, and not he was obviously expressing his personal view. It was a Sinn Féin policy, and he has rode very much in behind it. And uh, the picture uh, tells it all when he said, you know, we're with the Islamic community, all of the way. Well, as I've said a thousand and one times, I am with the community in uh, Bishop Bush Place and Assumption Place and all of those estates, Oshie Park and uh, all of those. I'm with those all of the way. And they are not being represented. Nobody has stood up and said, well, I am going to lead a charge here. It just hasn't happened. And I'm going to continue to point that out. Uh, now, the politicians are very active, as I've said the last time. Uh, if you stand still on the town, you will get your picture taken with a politician. There's no doubt about that because elections are getting closer and they have to seem like they're doing something. They'll, they'll, I've noticed that they're in and out of local shops as well. Uh, that's because I started um, a video in the local shops to try and promote them. And I'm delighted that they've come on board to a certain extent. But all of that is just disguise. It's just disguise because they've done nothing. They have said nothing, they have not led a charge, and I am going to continue to remind them. So, from now until election time, politicians, you're going to see lots of Eugene. So, what I'm saying to uh, the Facebook friends out there, this is the update. Uh, I'm watching it. We're meeting as a committee. We will organise what we need to organise. When the decision is made, there is a possibility that we're going to have another uh, meeting in a Lachlan's club, this time only for people who object. We've already passed a place where the debate on whether you agree with the development or not, that's, the Lockings Club will not be uh, that kind of debate. It's simply a discussion on where we go from here. Uh, I hope to have an architect there which will answer your planning queries if you have any and where we go and I'm interested in listening to the local community insofar as where you think we should go and how we should go about it and let's have a discussion about that, uh, an organised discussion um, without the mayhem that we had on uh, the last time uh, when it was badly organised. This time it will be an organised discussion. I'll give you further details on that when the announcement is made, whether it's for um, or whether it's it's planning permission or not. At that stage, I'll let you know. So until then, thanks for listening. And what I'd like you to do, if you didn't mind, is to share this video because we need as many people in Kilkenny to know what's going on, where it's going on, and what we are attempting to do about it. So thank you for listening.